this is a fairly decent shaped piece of masonite on the stage floor. It's a little bit worn, but it's not yet quite at the point of needing to be replaced. Although there is this little crack imperfection from something underneath that would put it higher on the list. As we get further off stage, there are some pieces of masonite that have spots where lag screws were put through the stage, anchoring down a lighting tree. That will need to be replaced soon, but generally speaking, the condition of the stage floor is pretty good. But when we get into the higher trafficked area, we start to see these bubbles of paint and extra screws and screw holes. Some of these bubbles of paint are from spatter technique that was used on a stage floor paint job and then the floor was painted black again. I think this one is the one I'm going to be replacing in particular because there's all these screw holes here that have been dug into and then painted over a couple of times. So that one and this piece next to it are going to get replaced. Other pieces are just as bad, but I've only prepped two pieces of masonite for this video, so I'm going to only replace two. These were replaced a couple years ago, but then we had a show that wanted to spatter paint all over the floor, and that just sort of ruined it. If we look towards the edge of the stage, this is towards the edge of the apron, these pieces have not been replaced in a long time. And you can see the edge of the stage here. This masonite is all sort of scattered. And these have been high on the list to replace for a couple of years. But it takes someone to cut this curve accurately. And I just haven't had the time to supervise that. So we limp along. You can see a big section of paint peeled up and then it was painted over again. These really should have gotten replaced years ago. You can see old spike tape marks that were painted over. The proper apron orchestra pit was replaced several years ago. And these are also in pretty good shape of fresh mopping and a fresh paint job will do this wonders. I've chosen the two pieces of masonite that I'm going to replace with the two new pieces of masonite that I've painted and prepped. And uh, I'm standing on one of them and the other one is here to my left. This is a job that if you want to wear knee pads, wear knee pads to protect your knees so you don't want to jam your knees onto a screw that's lying on the floor that hurts. This one's interesting. It had extra screws on the end and it was under, under screwed on this side. One, two, three, four, five screws on the side. And if we were going 16 inches on center, uh, that's at least two screws too short. This piece of masonite has been put down in here a long time. So it may be difficult to get up. I just need to find somewhere where I can pry in here without damaging next to it. It's got a lot of paint in the cracks. Struggle. Now, as it's coming. 
coming up, I may have missed some screws. So I'm going to be aware of that. And if so, I'll stop and I'll pull them out. If I can't see them, I'll try to remove them afterwards. This piece has the right amount of screws on the side. This masonite was put down with one and five eighths inch screws. It's a little overkill. You really only need one inch or one and a quarter inch screws. The problem with the bigger screws as you get bigger is that there are not screw threads towards the head, especially with the two inch screw and the two and a half and the three inch screw. There's a section of no threads. So if that part is part of your lumber that's supposed to bite, that's going to be less effective. And the one and five eighths just start to do that. But you've got basically a quarter of an inch of masonite. You're sinking down a little bit below that because you're below surface. So it's just it's a little overkill. You do want to check all the way around, make sure there's no broken screw heads or screws that have broken heads and anything, any imperfections that's going to cause like this, these chunks of masonite, they're going to cause little indentations and when you step on it, when you drive over it with a lift, it's going to Caution these tonight to buckle and get damaged. You can see some spots here. There's a spot here, spot here, spot here. That's where there were some holes drilled into the stage and they've been filled right here too with dowel, another one here. And that's common in a lot of theaters. Some theaters do not allow any screwing into your stage floor whatsoever. Uh, and some do not allow any drilling of holes in your stage floor. So if you're going into someone else's theater, know their rules and regulations and guidelines. Oh, see, here's, here's a broken leg screw, and that's going to be real bad for our piece of masonite. And there's actually a couple of these. Ooh. Wow. That's what was going on. Oh, I know what was going on. So all those holes were someone trying to screw something into the stage floor, but they didn't realize that this piece right here is sitting on top of a beam. This is a stage trap, and this is a stage trap, and this is a beam that supports the boards between the stage traps. Um, and, uh, and they were trying to use too long of a uh, screw and it was going through this piece of two by four tongue and groove and hitting that metal beam and breaking off. Wow, I picked a good one, huh? I think we're probably just gonna get a grinder and grind those off. I might be able to pry that one out with a, um, with the vice grips. I might be able to pry that one out with the vice grips, but not the others. Okay, I almost missed that. We're looking good here. Good here. Okay. I could try pounding these in, but again, I know that they are below here, and this could actually be what's causing this piece of wood to buckle up and pull up. Um, I know that below this is a piece of metal, and, uh, um, and if I just pound them down, that is just going to pound them back up. So. Going to. Oops. 
for vice grips on the big one. really helps to know what is underneath your stage so that you don't have this problem. I think I can grab this one. This one's going to be a little bit harder. Broken leg screws. I do think I want to try and pull that one out, not just grind it down, because I, like I said, I think those two are pulling this board up. I don't have a lot to grip onto. create too much of a divot, then that's going to have the same effect on my masonite as a bump. If something heavy lands in that divot with that pocket underneath it, that's going to create a break in the masonite as well. This is not probably the best tool for this. I should have gotten a chisel. That was what I had handy. Still don't think I can grip that though. Maybe. going down. Look at that. That's going to be better. You'd think after breaking off three or four leg screws, the stagehands would have thought something was amiss and maybe stopped doing that. Maybe trying something different. Maybe trying to figure out why. Doing that, and that's why there were about 15 or 20 holes here as they were trying to attach and screw something down in and failing. And that's already made that side flush again as well. All right. Look at that. 
Major problem resolved. So let's do a good sweeping. Get all that loose dust up. Get the dust out of these cracks because there's lots of buildup and dirt and dust. It's like sand from a show that we did with some sand on the stage a couple years ago. And again, while I'm sweeping, I'm looking for any other imperfections. Hopefully the broom will catch on them and bring them to my attention. Now the catch with putting down your masonite after you've painted it is I, my paint may have gone over the edges here and it may make this piece of masonite a little bit wider, a little bit thicker than the other pieces of the masonite. And it may not fit and we'll see whether that happens. One of the guidelines for spacing your masonite is you always put them down with the thickness in between the masonite a dime's width apart, the thickness of a dime. So if you want to have a couple of dimes and place them out, you could do that. That uh, solves a couple of issues long term. This stage floor looks like it was just butted up piece to piece to piece. That's kind of problematic. Uh, when you're mopping the stage, the moisture gets in there, it expands, it contracts. When you're painting the stage, the moisture gets in there, it expands, it contracts. That extra dime's width of space in between each sheet on all four sides will allow you a little bit of breathing room for your masonite. I can put this masonite down raw as well and paint it in place. I could have done that first. I'm doing it this way as an alternative in case you don't have as much time to spend dedicated into the space. I can paint this in another space, I can prep it, can be ready to go. I can come in here in about a half hour, 40 minutes, do a couple pieces of masonite and replace them and walk out and someone can come in and use the space right after me. If I paint them in place, I have to install them, I have to put them in place and then uh, I paint them and each coat of paint has to have an hour, hour and a half, two hours before people can walk on it. Three coats of paint, a primer and two coats of Man Brothers floor paint and suddenly I've got the space down for six hours or so. And just gotta see what time and space you have. Right. And it's just barely gonna sneak in there. Good, 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 good. You can see the major difference between the old masonite and the new. I don't 
know if I can give myself a full times with the par here. I'm going to give it a little bit of breathing space, but that means I may have to trim off my second space, my second piece. Okay, that looks good. The spacing's all good. I'm happy with it. Maybe this, these did have a dimes with the part and they just got filled in with paint. That's possible. They don't look like it. I'm using one inch drywall screws and that's pretty much all I need. The masonite is only a quarter of an inch. So a one inch drywall screw should have about three quarters of an inch of bite on the other side. But the one inch screws you could strip out uh, and so maybe one and a quarter would be safer. So one and a quarter or one inch is fine. Make sure they go flush and it pulls the masonite all the way flush to the surface and make sure you don't drive it through the masonite. That one totally missed. We're going to have to, that one went into some sort of screw hole and just kept spinning and it's probably I put my countersink hole exactly where the previous screws were. So I'm going to get another countersink bit and redo that one. Come back to it in a second. If I need to put extra screws in here, I can do that. I have to see if I can get away with just one nearby. If I get too far away from the corner, the corner is not going to be properly supported. If I want to be safe, I'll just be put it over there. So our masonite screwing pattern is a general starting point, and then we put extras in where needed. Fits, I think. I'll just balance out that gap. Okay. This one's not coming this way because of that issue I talked about. sliding over any further. those bubbles of paint don't get underneath. Ah, there, I'm happy with that. Okay. Same thing as 
our other corner. That's what happens when you always do the corners in the same spot. And yes, I could have two drills and uh, not have to change that bit. I could have a countersink bit in one. And that one didn't work either. I don't think it's necessary. you will do with a theater as old as this one with as many layers of masonite as them place down. If we were to remasonite the whole thing, we might want to offset them so they go on in a different pattern to avoid that problem. And you'll also experience frequently, just randomly, and it happens all too often where I screw a piece of masonite down and I hit the head of the screw in the plywood lid and you just would think the chances of that are, are none or virtually none but they happen quite frequently two pieces of new masonite ready to go and down and installed. They look good. This one is the better one of the two. This one has a little heavier texture on it and I don't know if you can see that in the video from the distance but uh, this one was painted with I thought it was a half inch nap roller but it turned out it was a three quarter inch nap roller and that three quarter inch nap roller put this uh, bumpy texture into the paint. Three quarter inch nap rollers are designed for, or for not smooth surfaces. This one was painted with the half inch nap roller and that's all very smooth and, and nice and consistent. So this is the half inch or three eighths is the size and roller you want to use. You can even use quarter inch. I just find the quarter inch rollers as I said in the, earlier in the video. They don't hold enough paint and I prefer the ones that will hold more paint and I don't have to keep filling out my roller uh, without getting to this point where they're putting in texture. If you're installing new masonite, even just one piece, give yourself an hour or an hour and a half at least, uh, just in case you encounter any problems, like the problems I discovered with those hidden lag screws. These are our two new pieces of masonite. The one on the right here has the better surface. It was the one painted with the half inch nap roller. Half inch or smaller nap roller is the one you want for your masonite stage floor. This one over here has a slightly bumpier texture. This one was made and painted with the three quarter inch nap roller and that creates that extra bumpy texture. I put this one on the off stage side of the stage. Put my better one more on stage. There we go. You can see the difference between the two new ones and the scuffed up and taped and repainted and screwed and repainted and painted with 
dribbles and drabs and repainted versions all around. So with the masonite, I'm demonstrating how to use it just on the stage floor here, but we use it uh, all over the place in theater. We don't just use it for the stage floor, we use it for our set floors. And it goes on top of the platforms and creates a layer of soundproofing, deadens the sound a little bit of the footsteps, and provides a nice, clean, smooth surface for our paint jobs on our sets. And you can do other layers of soundproofing in between the masonite and the platform, but uh, at minimum, the masonite on top of the platforms uh, will uh, have a significant reduction in footsteps and echoes. And uh, again, it's your primary scene painting surface. The nice thing about putting masonite on your set is that you can build your set in one place and have your masonite laid out somewhere else and you can be painting your floor and then you just have to install it. Again, saving time and not have to paint the floor on stage, depending on how you plan out your shows. So you won't always be painting your masonite just the stage floor black. You may be painting it some sort of scenic treatment. And again, you'll, you'll be priming that with whatever primer is appropriate for that scenic treatment and painting it as appropriate for that set design. But the same principles hold, the same frequency of uh, uh, countersinking, the same process, everything's the same. It's just getting a different surface treatment. Thank you.